dear God, as we join together, let each of us here play a part in this service by conveying your love to each other. And as we do so, may each of us here feel that connection, invisible though it may be, it is real. This is the connection of community as we join together. And because we join together within your presence, dear God, we feel that sense of communion as we know that part of us is also part of you, blended together, joined in one spiritual family. And may our presence be a light to those in the spirit world. And let us now feel the excitement and joy as those in the spirit world, our loved ones, our helpers and inspirers join with us now in one great community within the presence of God. And we ask now that as this service moves on, that each of us here should receive something in part that we need to help us in the days ahead. We leave this time that we spend together in your care and keeping and ask that all that is said and done be in your name, which is love. Amen. The reading that I've chosen, I actually read last week in my very first physical service in a church after the beginnings of lockdowns last year. And actually, as I read it, as I read these words, I got very excited because I knew that I was doing this service a week later. And I thought that the words would have a, a very different resonance with SNUI. So I'm very glad to read these words by Maurice Barbonell. Many of you will know that Maurice Barbonell is one of our pioneers in spiritualism, a journalist, one of the founders of Psychic News, as well as being the conduit for the voice that we all know as Silver Birch. But these words are his and they are called Spiritual United Nations. One day after death, you will be precisely the same individual as you were the day before, except that you will have discarded your physical body. Death comes when the real you withdraws itself and functions through your spirit body. Life in the spirit world is not hazy, unsubstantial or nebulous. It is both foolish and erroneous to imagine that when we pass from this life, we sleep forever or until such time as there will be a resurrection. Death is resurrection. When we die, there is no great judge on a white throne separating the sheep from the goats. For we have judged ourselves in the spiritual nature we have attained by the character we have formed. That is our spiritual passport. Human relationships of spiritual life, differences of colour, creed, race, language and nationality will be superseded by the prevailing knowledge of one's spiritual nature. In essence, the same spirit is within every human being in the world. 
you do not have to die to become a spiritual being. You are a spiritual being today. The simple truth is that God has made us all of one spirit. The universal laws have ordained it. Members of every race, irrespective of the colour of their skins, are spiritual kith and kin. Spiritually, we are all children in the divine family. This is, in fact, the spiritual United Nations. Let's talk about democracy. Democracy is something that is very prized and precious in this world. Perhaps those of us who live in a country where democracy is the norm sometimes take it for granted. And yet we know that there are parts of the world where democracy is not yet a reality. And in these parts of the world, people do not have a choice. People are not treated equally. Their voice is not listened to in the way that democracy listens to our voices. But Maurice Barber now talked about us all having the same spiritual foundation. And therein lies a clue, a clue to our spiritual democracy. Because whatever is happening in this world, however unjust it might be, there still remains supporting us, each of us, in spiritual democracy. And by this, I mean that we all have that same equal future. It doesn't matter who you are or what you believe or what you do with your life. When that time comes for you to take your transition to the spirit world, you are guaranteed entry. There is no opportunity for some and not for others. That wouldn't be democratic. And God has made things democratic. But even those who do not accept that there is a life after this life will still find themselves in the spirit world. But it's not just about our place in the spirit world in the future. It's also about our opportunity our opportunity that lies in front of us. Within each and every one of us, irrespective of who we are, our potential exists. And that potential, all the things that we haven't done, all the things that we haven't become yet, all the things that we have the capacity to do, are there waiting to be achieved. And they will be counted. They will matter. Nothing that we do is wasted. Everything that we do shapes us. I often think about water springing from the earth at the top of a hill. It trickles down the hill and gathers momentum as more and more water comes. And slowly it gathers together and forms a stream. And the stream forms a river and the river makes its way to the sea. And as it flows over the land, it forms a riverbed and it shapes the land, it changes the geography. But the land that the water that the river passes over 
doesn't remember every drop of water that goes by, but it is still shaped by it. And perhaps we're like that as the water of our life flows through us. We're shaped by it. We might not remember every second, every minute, every hour, every day, and so on. There will be things that we did last week that we've already forgot, but in some small part, at least, they've shaped us. They've helped to create our spiritual future. Our spiritual future that everyone is entitled to and everyone receives. I described it as a democracy. And in the democracy, we get to choose. We get a voting form with a list of names on. And we get to put a little cross in a box next to one of the names. That's the choice that we make in a democracy. In a spiritual democracy, we have to think about the things that we want to vote for in our own lives. We have to think about the things that we want to represent us as a spiritual being. Do we want to place our vote with caring for others? Do we want to place our vote with creativity? Do we want to place our vote with caring for animals? There are all manner of things that we can choose to do and invest our time and energy in, in this life. And likewise, we can make the not so good choices. We can choose to be destructive. We can choose to be mean to other people. We can even choose to be mean to ourselves. And yet, despite all that, whether we make the most positive choices available to us or the most negative choices available to us. That democracy still gives us our place within eternity. There is no gate that slams shut. There is no block in the road, just a clear view ahead. And what we take with us are all the things that we voted for, that we chose within our life. In his words, Maurice Barbonell talked about all of us being spiritual kith and kin, despite things like the colour of our skin, our nationality, the language that we speak. But I don't think he was saying that those things don't matter. And it's easy to, to think when we consider that we're all spiritual beings, it's easy to think that that's all that matters. But it isn't. Because despite us being spiritual beings, our task in hand is to live this life in the physical world. This life that we're all leading now. In this world that is difficult at times. This world that is beautiful in places, but also is problematical. And there is ugliness in this world. And those things too shape our lives. Some of us face injustice every day of our lives. That becomes part of our lives. And we cannot just say, well, that doesn't matter, because at the end of the day, we will 
all become spiritual beings in the spirit world. We have to respect each other's experience. And if we really truly believe that we are spiritual kith and kin, then perhaps we have to do whatever we can, whenever we can, to make others experience better. If we find that we have an abundance of something in our life, then can we choose to share that? Whether that's a material thing, a monetary thing, or even one of privilege. Can we not think who might also benefit from the opportunities that we have? For it's very important that we care for each other in that way. If we accept that we are all spiritual beings, then we must accept that when we look at someone else, we are also looking at God. And so one way that we can express our love for God is through our actions towards other people. And so we come back to the choice that we have in this life. That democratic right to choose. Every day when we awake and move into the day, we will face a huge number of choices. Whenever we can, let's try to remember what we are voting for. Are our actions voting for a better world? Are our actions voting for others to have a better life? And are our actions the actions of someone who has God within their very soul? These are the choices that we have every day. And I leave you with the question. When you wake up tomorrow morning, what and who will you be voting for? Thank you. Dear God, we give thanks for this time that we have been able to spend together in your presence, in the presence of each other, and in the presence of those that we love and who love us in the spirit world. As we move now into our lives, let us take with us some of that joy of being together some of that power of community and let us use it in our lives to form bonds with others so that we may convey your love God to them. We know that there are many challenges for each of us in the days and months and years ahead but when we think of you dear God we ask that we should feel your presence strongly and be uplifted by it, knowing that we have everything that we need to face the next step. We ask that your healing presence surrounds us and those that we love. And we ask that wherever we may be called to service, that we recognize this and continue to represent your love on this earth. Amen.